Action. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to read a book. It's Santana's new book. And he already started reading it, but I'm just going to catch up on it so I can know what he's reading about. And it is called The Phantom Toll Booth. It's what? What do you think? So chapter one is called Milo. There was once a boy named Milo who didn't know what to do with himself. Not just sometimes, but always. When he was in school, he longed to be out. When he was out, he longed to be in. On the way, he thought about coming home, and coming home, he thought about going. Wherever he was, he wished he were somewhere else, and when he got there, he wondered why he'd be, why he'd even bothered. Nothing really interested him, least all of the things that should have. It seems to me that almost everything is a waste of time, he remarked. One day as he walked dejectedly home from school, I can't see the point in learning to solve useless problems or subtracting turnips from turnips or knowing where Ethiopia is or how to spell February. And since no one bothered to explain otherwise, he regarded the process of seeking knowledge as the greatest waste of time of all. As he and his unhappy thoughts hurried along for a while, he was never anxious to be where he was going. He liked to get there as quickly as possible. It seemed a great wonder that the world, which was so large, could sometimes feel so small and empty. And worst of all, he continued sadly, there's nothing for me to do nowhere. I'd care to go, oh, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. And worst of all, he continued sadly, there's nothing for me to do, nowhere I'd care to go, and hardly anything worth seeing. He punctuated this last thought with such a deep sigh that a house sparrow singing nearby stopped and rushed home to be with his family. Without stopping or looking up, Milo dashed past the buildings and busy shops that lined the street and in a few minutes reached home, dashed through the lobby, hopped out of the elevator two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and off again, opened the apartment door, rushed into his room, flopped dejectly, deject, dejectedly. What does that even mean, dejectedly? I don't know, mother. <laughs> flopped dejectedly into a chair and grumbled softly. Another long afternoon. He looked gloomily at all the things he owned, the books that were too much trouble to read, the tools that he'd never learned to use, the small electronic automobile he hadn't driven in months, or was it years? And the hundreds of other games and toys and bats and balls and bits and pieces scattered around him. And then, to one side of the room, just next to the phonograph, he noticed something he had certainly never seen before. Who could possibly have left such an enormous package and such a strange one? For while it was not quite square, it, it was definitely not round. And for its size, it was larger than almost any other big package of smaller dimension that he had ever seen. Show him the pictures. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. Okay. See Milo? Yeah. Just so he has unhappy. this big, um, suspicious package that he doesn't recognize. What could it be? Attached to one side was a bright blue envelope which simply said, for Milo, who has plenty of time. <coughs> uh oh. Of course, if you've ever gotten a surprise package, you can imagine how puzzled and excited Milo was. And if you've never gotten one, pay close attention because someday you might. I don't think it's my birthday, he puzzled and Christmas must be months away. I haven't been outstandingly good or even good at all. 
He had to admit this, even to himself. Most probably, I won't like it anyway, but since I don't know where it came from, I can't possibly send it back. He thought about it for quite a while and then opened the envelope just to be polite. One genuine turnpike toll booth, it stated, and then it went on. Easily assembled at home and for use by those who have never traveled in lands beyond. Beyond what? thought Milo as he continued to read. This package contains the following items. One genuine turnpike toll booth to be erected according to directions. Three precautionary signs to be used in a precautionary fashion. Assorted coins for use in paying tolls. One map up to date and carefully drawn by master cartoonographers depicting natural and man-made features. One book of rules and traffic regulations, which may not be bent or broken. Uh-oh. Results are not guaranteed, but if not perfectly satisfied, your wasted time will be refunded. Following the instructions, which told him to cut here, lift there, and fold back all around, he soon had the toll booth unpacked and set up on its stand. This is the picture of Milo being bewildered by the contents of this suspicious box. Is he inside it? No. In his imagination? Not quite. He's just built it. He only, he, he assembled it. He fitted the windows in place and attached the roof, which extended out on both sides and fastened on the coin box. It was very much like the toll booths he'd seen many times on family trips, except of course, it was much smaller and purple. What a strange present, he thought to himself. The least they could have done was to send a highway with it for it's terribly impractical, impractical without one. <laughs> but since at the time there was nothing else he wanted to play with, he set up the three signs. Slow down approaching toll booth. Please have your fare ready. Have your destination in mind and slowly unfolded the map. As the announcement stated, it was a beautiful map in many colors showing principal roads, rivers, and seas, towns and cities, mountains and valleys, intersections and detours, and sites of outstanding interest told, told I'm sorry, and sites of outstanding interest, both beautiful and historic. What the hell did I just read? The only trouble was that Milo had never heard of any of the places it indicated, and even the names sounded most peculiar. I don't think there really is such a country, he concluded after studying it carefully. Well, it doesn't matter anyway, and he closed his eyes and poked a finger at the map. Dictionopolis, read Milo slowly when he saw that. His finger had chosen... Oh, well, I might as well go there as anywhere. He walked across the room and dusted the car off carefully. Then taking the map and rule book with him, he hopped in and for lack of anything better to do, drove slowly to the toll booth as he deposited his coin and rolled past the remark wistfully. I do hope this is interest. This is an interesting game. Otherwise, the afternoon will be so terribly dull. Good point. He has a good point. It's Milo in his car. <laughs> it's tiny, Mom. It's kind of small. Yeah, it's pretty car. small. So that was chapter one. That was pretty easy. So wh who's Milo? Milo is a guy that doesn't even know what to do. Is he a guy, like a grown-up, or is he a kid? He's still kind of young. He uh -huh. walks home to school, so I'm guessing he's like high school, uh -huh. middle school, okay, fifth grade, fourth, okay, into one of those. All right. And is he like excited about life? Is he like how does he feel 
he feels boring about his life. He, he feels has boring. nothing to do with it. Yeah, he's bored with his life. He's over it. Nothing excites him, right? Yeah. That's why the pictures are in black. Black and white. Yeah. To just kind of emphasize that it's just a really boring story. Yeah. It's not boring, but... That his life is boring. Yeah. Okay. Um, so why is Milo significant? What did he do? He walked home from school and he was sitting in his boring old room looking at all these things that didn't interest him. And then <laughs> what happened? He saw someone knocked on the door, right? No, nobody knocked on the door. He saw a package. He saw a package. What color was the package? The package was blue. Yeah, it was a big blue package. Like large, maybe. But it was it square or was it circle? None other like. Right, it was like not square, but it was in a circle. It was like this really peculiar package, <laughs> right? Probably looked like a hexagon. Right. With right. like six sides or something. <laughs> you would not know what that looked like. <laughs> so does he leave the package there and go make a sandwich? Or what does he do with the package? He just opens it. Hmm. And what's inside? He assembles it. What's inside? I don't know. A toll booth. Uh, wait, what's a toll booth? A toll booth is, it's like this, um, it's like this mini, like mini house or a mini shack. It's really tiny for just one person and someone (sighs) usually sits inside. And so when you travel, your car has to drive past this window and you have to put coins in it to let you go from one city to another or from one state to another. (laughs) Why is that funny? Or if there's a bridge. Because it's just a tiny box. <laughs> it is. It's a tiny box. What is he going to do with just one human? He's just going to stay inside for an hour and be bored? Um, No, he's not going in there. He's in his car. So his car is going in there. He's putting coins in. And he's driving. You have to put coins car. in to be able to pass through it. Here, I'm going to show you a picture of a toll booth. A real toll booth? Yes, a real toll booth. <laughs> it's where drivers have to pay to be able to pass through. From a very tiny box? It's This is what it looks like. A toll booth. Cars drive through and they put coins in so that they can, like a lot of bridges have toll booths. So you pay to cross the bridge and the, the money that you pay is how the city maintains the bridge to keep it oiled and keep it running well. Show the camera, camera. No. Oh, show my dad, you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's the toll booth. Toll booth. All right, so he's built this toll booth. He gets in this imaginary car, and now he's driving where? To across the side. Did he pick a place to go? Yeah. Where did he pick? He picked the desert. No, he didn't. He didn't pick the desert. He you picked don't even this. Know. He picked the he Atlantic picked Ocean di- tip Dictionopolis. Remember on this map? Dictionopolis. So this is the, the very fine map that he talks about having. And then down at the bottom here is Dictionopolis, and that's where he chose to go. So is any of this real? Is any is he actually going to Dictionopolis? There's no way. No, he's in his bedroom, right? It's all his imagination. He's living out <laughs> this imaginary um road trip right <laughs> it's not even gonna happen because when he wakes up well it's, it's happening in his up. mind he's making it happen in his mind i remember i talked when i slept like i was dreaming uh-huh and then my dad told me something mm-hmm. and i actually talked you respond <laughs> yeah <laughs> a lot of people do that that's normal very normal do you do it oh i used to do it all the time <laughs> yeah all the time. but I, and i would respond in my dream I just did it. I just did it this morning. When my alarm goes off, my watch vibrates to wake me up. And I was dreaming and I wanted my watch to stop vibrating. So in my dream, I went to the Apple store and I was like, <laughs> This is really goofy. But in my dream, I was so angry. I'm like, I can't get my watch to stop vibrating. Like, I don't know what's wrong with it. And the whole time, it was me sleeping through my alarm. So, yes. <laughs> And I probably was talking, but there's no one else here. To Wait, hear what kind of Apple store? The regular Apple store. There's only one kind. Oh, you mean the one that has the market? The market? Market. The Apple market? Yeah. What the heck is that? Like the one where you got Apple watches and Apple phones. Yes, it's called the Apple store. 
I thought you meant like a little apple farm. No, no, not an orchard. No, that would seem pretty tasty. So Milo's on a mission. He's on an imaginary mission. We're going to read chapter two next time. It's nearly 30. Did you, when you read the book by yourself, is that what you understood of it? Or does it help you understand it when mom reads it to you after? You do. Yeah. That's okay. It's a book for 12-year-olds, so. Now this is going to end.